Greetings, everyone. Greetings, everyone. Hello. All right. <laughs> Welcome to Calumet Public School District 132 Board of Education, July 20, 2024. It's a 6 p.m. meeting. John, roll call. <laughs> Dixon, absent. Golar, present. Kimbrough, present. Love, absent. Story, present. Harris, here. Right. Add your flag. Agenda. Suggested motion be hereby move that the Board of Education approve the agenda for July 2024 regular session as presented. May I have a motion? Motion by Mr. Golar. Second. Second. Second by Ms. Story. Roll call, John. Yes. Brown. Here. Dixon. Yes. Absent. Golar. Present. Kimbrough. Yes. Love. Absent. Story? Yes. Harris? Yes. Motion carried. Superintendent's report. Good evening, board, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tonight we will have three reports from the Human Resource Department, the Academic Department, uh, as well as facilities. First, we will have Ms. Bates uh, for the 2024 summer camp, uh, summer school recap. <laughs> So uh, our summer school uh, was a success based upon having the great students that attended, but also most importantly, having teachers who were committed to the process. So our daily routines consist of, we had 131 students registered for summer school with the average daily attendance of roughly 63%. As you know, uh, breakfast and lunch was provided daily and, family, and with families within the community also had an opportunity to come for lunch. So though the areas of course is our focus is what we discussed before, the MAC, ELA, STEM, and the Greenhouse, and our scene, which allowed us to have two in-house field trips from Mobile Ed Productions. Okay, there you go. Core content and the assessment, it basically gives you an outline of what we, what we worked on based off of data, and then also the overview of the uh, results. We again need to uh, place a greater emphasis on, thank you, on our assessments in the area of math. Uh, there was some strong gains in our reading, but again, those who came to summer school daily were the ones who benefited the most. Our STEAM and our Sky Dome pre uh, planetarium presentations allowed our children to have hands-on science uh, twice during the uh, rotation cycle with a company that came into our district. We also provided our students daily hands-on science in our, with um, our makerspace room as well as in our greenhouse. Our greenhouse has now tomatoes, cabbage, um, tomatoes, cabbage, uh, what else? <laughs> Zucchini and squash. Yeah, you know about squash. Peppers, thank you, thank you. Herbs. Yes, what else? Herbs. And herbs. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's coming along well. Our children had an opportunity to really test their knowledge and, uh, and uh, even some of our administrators got a chance to uh, interact with our students uh, during this, uh, the STEM piece 
and the Dome Planetarium, and that was an excellent opportunity for his children to learn all about stars and uh, looking at the solar system. So that was a very engaging piece. We, we had an opportunity to have our children to not only, and I'm going to the, to the uh, greenhouse for a second, our children had an opportunity to plant and take home all their projects from the STEM, from the greenhouse, as well as from uh, STEM. And here are some more of our pictures. Did I show that earlier? Yeah. Okay, there's the greenhouse. So we also included this year for the very first time, we're going, you'll see soon, we have collard greens and we also have uh, hostas, a variety of hostas and they're inside and outside. And the hostas are we're doing inside and outside along with a couple of vegetable plants so our children can see the differences in what happens on the inside versus what grows on the outside. That's it, thank you. Next, we will have the Summer Facilities Project recapped by Mr. Corley. All right, uh, good evening, board, community, colleagues. I'm gonna give a brief uh, update on the <clears throat> progress that the Builders and Grounds Department is making with our uh, various projects that we have going on throughout the district. We'll start with Broke Academy. Um, we had three major projects that are going on uh, was scheduled for Grove Academy this summer. Fire alarm panel upgrade, uh, which is actually scheduled to start uh, next week, Monday. Um, the clock replacement uh, has already started, actually, and putting in the infrastructure for that. Um, clock replacement is basic, basically getting a new clock system because the ones that we have are, were original to the building. So, a lot of them were given out and they're very expensive to replace with the being older models. Um, and our gymnasium door replacement pro project as well. We just get new double doors that lead out to the um, playground because the old ones were rusting out and beginning to uh, lose their integrity with leaks. Uh, next we'll move over to Baroque School, which is of course our oldest building in the district. Uh, we had three uh, major projects there. Uh, breaker uh, installation, which is for our ansel system in our kitchen, uh, which is fire suppression for that goes right over the stove. Lift pump replacement and the combination isolation valve. That's basically the sump pump for the school. That's what uh, that lift pump is. It takes all of the waste water out of the school and pumps it out to the city waste. So um, those pumps were almost original to the building, so those are being replaced. And there's a check valve, which limits how much water actually goes out, how much waste goes out at once. So that's getting replaced as well in conjunction. And on to Calumet Public, which is here. The Calumet Middle School Gymnasium Edition. Um, we're almost at substantial completion. Um, we're moving along. Very Every day you walk out something new, and we're almost there. We're almost at, at the finish line. If you guys are driving past on a you know, daily or weekly basis, you'll see something new on the outside. Uh, the next coming weeks, you'll see something new. The, the fence started going up outside around the perimeter of the um, addition. So that's very exciting. Um, the science lab classroom remodel right down the hallway here, classrooms 113 and 111. Um, the flooring, we almost have su substantial completion there. Flowing is going in tomorrow. Um, sinks are in, casework is in. So once the flooring is done, that'll be complete. That should be complete by the end of next week. And also here at Calumet Middle School, additional security cameras and kitchen appliance installation. So every, every school is getting new appliances, uh, this building and the other two as well. And those are actually coming on a Tuesday the 23rd. It was scheduled for this week, Tuesday, but it got pushed back to the 23rd. They were waiting on a few items to get it to their warehouse. And additional security cameras, of course, will make the building safer. Just adding a couple of blind spots that we identified last year. We're going to cover those with uh, a few additional security cameras here at Cape. And that is it. I have a question. Oh. Are there going to be more lights um, put around the areas, and like in the corner areas and around the school? Because I know some of the times the trees are kind of covering up. Um, the areas. 
Yeah, I've, I've driven past and I'd actually come in and walk through the courtyard to see if there, if we had adequate light out there right now. Um, we based the lights to go over the doors uh, where somebody could, you know, possibly try to, you know, intrude, you know, during off hours. So that's where the lighting is based right now. If we see the need down the line to add some lighting, that won't be a problem. Um, they pretty much just, um, they jump off of the existing lights that are there and just add it to the outside of the building. So that's not a that's not a big thing. If we identify we do need additional lighting. Thank you. Okay, question. Um, for Burt Oak, you said you have to replace the doors. Is that all interior doors or going to the outside or how's that? So at Burr Oak Academy, that's two um there are two sets of double doors that lead out to the courtyard playground. So it's on the inter it's interior, but it's leading outside to the exterior courtyard. And the, those lock, of course, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And then the clock replacement synchronization for it. Mm -hmm. How is that synchronized? Because when the time change or you fall back or move forward, is that going to change with the clock? So we're getting a Visiplex system, which is this Visiplex. same system. Yeah. And it, it's all, it's called an atomic clock system. So it changes automatically. Last um, cameras in Caillou Mat. Mm -hmm. Do we have cameras over there in the gym? Yes. They put it in before. Yes. And then another question. The, are you talking about the existing the new or gym. The, Both, they're, actually. They're, yes, there are definitely cameras in our gym now, and there's abundance of cameras in the new, okay. new gym. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Because I see you always looking for the blind spots, and that's yes. great. And I know it's not, maybe it's a question for Alexander, Dr. Alexander. The Rain Ready Project, is that in the mix anywhere, Dr. Alexander? We actually have uh, our kickoff meeting with Rain Ready today. Um, because this pro flies and stuff. Because this project won't take place until next summer, um, we have a very long way to go before we start to see anything. Right now, Rain Ready is still working with their funders to do whatever they have to do. Uh, as it relates to funding. Uh, Mr. Corley and I talked with him today and we have a meeting scheduled sometime in August to talk about this, the timeline and process. Uh, but as for now, there really hasn't been any movement on the district side for Rain Ready. I had one more question, Mr. Corley. Um, is there any Oh, the the microphone. So, how is that going to work? How is the intercom using the micro the microphone? So, do we have to do extra? Are you talking about intercom system or microphone system, like for performances and things? Yes, both. For, okay, so the intercom system is is going to be connected to the existing. So, anything that announced here on the school side, they'll also hear. So, consider that a part of the school. Okay. So anything, fire alarm, anything that happens on this side of the school is always, it's going to happen there as well. Okay. So the system, they, they've been combined. Now as far as a PA system, we're going to back, we're, we're purchasing a standalone PA system that we can use over, over there, take up and take down when we need it. Uh, we decided to go, with, go that way because it's, it's, it's more economical and um, we'll have a place to actually store the things that, you know, store that PA system away safely. Uh, not, not saying that we don't have that here, but we, we're definitely strapped here for, for uh, storage. But we decided to go with a standalone system, which means we just set it up and take it down for performances. Now, I know that when we're setting up for meetings and things like that, and sometimes the microphones go out, whatever. So are we, I mean, is, uh, it, is the technology, are those individuals, are they working with us? So the technology in the building, that is state of the art. The reason that we have issues here in Calumet is because it's old. Yeah. It's just old technology. If I'm not mistaken, this is the original sound system yes. that came with the building 13 years ago. So you have to think about the changes in technology, innovation. Things are so much more crisp now than they were back then. So with the new building, um, all of the technology is run through the walls. There's no need to redo anything. Um, the boardroom is equipped, or the multi-purpose room is equipped with its own technology, uh, its own sound and all of that. So 
we, we, we're going to be in way better shape than we are now. But I'm, I was just asking, so that what I'm saying is the technology company that we have now, are they in the workings with us what we're doing now? In part, so, yes. So the when, when you go out to bid for a project, part of the project is technology. So you have companies that they subcontract to do it. Our technology company has to work with them to tie everything in. So just as Mr. Corley said, essentially think of it as just an extension of our current building. So even though they're building this new facility, they still have to talk to our current tech people just to make sure they're tying everything in properly. Okay, thanks. And just, just for perspective, uh, I'm not done with this. Think of these wireless, or any wireless microphone system, think of it as a cell phone. After a while, your cell phone gets old and stops working because of the frequencies and all the new digital technology. Same thing for wireless microphones. They do get old, frequencies change, the frequencies that they use, the ones that they use become outdated or they get crowded with traffic. That's why you get that cut in and cut out. That's how wireless microphones work. All right, thank you. And finally, we will have the SY2425 staffing update by Ms. Roxanne Williams. Before you start, Ms. Williams, as you call their names, if they're in the room, could you have them come to the podium or after? So we want to just hear from them. Good evening. Good evening. So I'm here to do a staffing update for the 24 25 school year. And so, of course, I'm on presentation. Thank you. Okay. So, um, I first um, want to welcome Dr. Armand Gasnell. And Kenyatta Greer will be our assistant principal at Fur Oak Elementary School. Okay. So, um, did you want to say something to them while they're standing? Just so they can introduce themselves. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Board of Education. My name is. Armin Gasparro. Uh, you can call me Army if you'd like. That's my nickname. Um, very excited to be here. I've had an opportunity over the last two weeks to get to know uh, all the administrators and, and the team. And I can't tell you how impressed I am with, with everybody and everyone's dedication. So I'm really excited to be here, ready to get to work, uh, and looking forward to meeting everybody and working with the Board of Education. So thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Holly Cospade, and as you know, I'm the new AP at the middle school here. Mr. Ivy and I have been working hard on um, looking at our data and talking about how we're going to move forward with this school year, so uh, we are definitely working well together, and I look forward to keeping that up. Good evening, uh, my name is Kenyatta Greer, I'm the new AP at Burr Oak Elementary. Uh, this is my 17th year in education and my eighth year as an administrator. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting to know everyone and working with you all. And thank you for the opportunity. Well, as you go to your seat, I want to say personally, um, thank you guys for choosing our district. I know you couldn't went anywhere else, um, but you believed in us enough. Um, to come here and lend us your expertise and your knowledge. So um, I'm grateful and um, I thank you for your commitment to us and looking forward to one for you working with you guys. Yes, and additionally, um, I want to congratulate our um, people that we have here, our, our staff that we have already, Mr. David Drown. <laughs> and um, uh, Mr. Neal, <coughs> who's out today. And um, Mr. Andrew Brown. And so I'm confident that this school year will be even more remarkable and filled with lots and lots of accomplishments. 
So um, my next slide will talk about um, building vacancies. Right now we have nine um, building vacancies and we also have three district vacancies. Um, we are working to fill these positions. Um, the plan that um, we're doing is um, word of mouth, I'm sorry, word of mouth, social media, and job boards. Um, we are continually um, looking and interviewing um, daily, we are looking, and um, to fill these positions. So if you know of anybody, anybody in the audience know of anybody that's credentialed that can do it, please send them my way. Also, um, our international teachers, so good thing is their licenses have been issued. Um, the visa dates have been issued, and also they have arri arrival dates. So right now, Peoria staff are meeting with them weekly um, for updates um, on their arrival, their uh, licenses, um, as they work with NT as well. Also, the staff is actually here um, in this area um, talking to landlords um, for housing for our international um, students, uh, teachers, I'm sorry. And so, again, once they get here, we have in place um, di district mentoring for our international teachers and also they will have additional services uh, specifically for them. So um, we are excited about them coming. They are excited as well. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. I would like to add one thing more. Um, I am very excited about the work that the HR department has done uh, in the last few months from developing a recruiting, a recruitment and hiring plan uh, to really executing it. Uh, although we are in the midst of a teacher shortage, uh, we still continue very diligently to find teachers. Uh, and I'll tell you this, find the best teachers. We've had some teachers who've come our way who not going to touch them. And in the past, I mean, just because a teacher had a heartbeat, a driver's license, uh, and a teacher's certificate, they got a job. But the reality is that that hurts your students. And so we have to move away from that practice. So uh, we do have a cadre of longtime subs who've been with us for a while, uh, who we will call upon to get us uh, to the school year and through it. We are continuing to look for teachers Everywhere I go, I'm talking about it. It's posted on my social media. Um, but unfortunately, across the state of Illinois, we're all having these issues. So uh, kudos to Roxanne, the academic team, the principal team. They all have been humping to really make this come to fruition. Dr. Alexander, real quick, special, could you explain the special education teachers? We do not have a self-contained, so are they pushed in with the teachers? Are they co-teaching so, or sure depending on what the kid iep says so most of it is co-teaching where the resource teacher pushes in but some of the kids get pulled out so we are looking to move to a self-contained model one of the biggest issues is finding a teacher yeah. and so at this point we are continuing uh with the push in and pull out as needed or as dictated by the iep so is it is it the resource teacher we're looking for or the <coughs> So it's the we only have resource teachers in our district. Yes. They're they're special ed teachers, yes. but they teach a resource style of teaching. Okay. It's not self contained as of yet. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, consent agenda items. Be here by move that the Board of Education approve the consent agenda items. A, B, C, D, and E, as presented. May I have a motion? Motion by, I'm sorry? Ms. Kimbrough. Ms. Kimbrough. May I have a second? We have to do the motion before we uh, take a discussion. We want a full seat. Okay, so we want a table, letter C. Um,
them out. So we can uh, table letter C. So, so you want to pull back your uh, the motion? Yes. So we want to table letter C. C1, I'm sorry. We have a motion to approve personnel, letter A. Oh, that's, um, is that it? Okay, so we're approving letter A, B, D, E. Motion by Mr. Goldard. Second. Second by Ms. Brown. Any question? Question? Oh, God. Brown? Yes. Dixon, absent. Goldar? Yes. Kimbrough? Yes. Love, absent. Story? Yes. Harris? Yes. Items A, B, D, and E carry. Number seven. So, letter C, 6C, C1, approval of school year 2024-2025 school improvement plan for Burr Oak School and Calumet Middle School. So, question about this. So, the um, school improvement plan, um, I read it and it was supposed to be 24, 25. So some of the dates are incorrect. It says 23. And then when you're supposed to have a person who's going to actually monitor or who's in, um, over it, though some of those are blank. So um, in lieu of that, just we need to update the school improvement plan. You had something, Kimbrough? Yeah, that was the same. And there were um, some, uh, like you said, some questions that weren't responded to there and um, in terms of uh, beginning dates only and no like end date if it's 2026. Um, also uh, alignment, uh, I found some alignment issues as well. So I just kind of want to relook at that. And are we, um, with the iReady materials or? So I, I sent that out yesterday to the board. That was an error uh, from the previous one. So I'm wondering if you all. No, I still that. saw the one. It was in the new one. All right. So I, I I will have this revisited. So the school improvement plan is written by the district team. I'm sorry, let me rephrase it because it's not the district team. The building team and the um, school improvement consultant from ISB. So uh, the state has approved this. Uh, so I need to go back through it with them. <laughs> Mr. Crowley, you don't get this flying. Um, the state has already approved it, so I'll go back with them just to make um, those minor corrections uh, before it's resubmitted. But everything else substantially was approved by the state. Yeah. But thank you all so much for catching that. Um, once the state said it was approved, I didn't touch it again either, so I didn't catch that either. So thank you for that. What about the other school? Was that in here or are they working on it? We got Burr Oak. Both of them are here. Burr Oak and. Um, what about a, a local, I mean, in the school itself, the school improvement plan? For who we missing? Yeah, Burr Oak. It's only for Burr Oak and Calumet. Okay, but do we have a school improvement plan for that guy? So, no, because, let me, let me rephrase that. This school improvement plan, no, we don't. This is only for schools that are a school improvement status based on designations. Okay. So because Baroque Elementary, I'm sorry, Baroque Academy is not rated, they don't get a school improvement plan. But how can we plan ahead 
to approve our school if we do not have a school improvement plan. I do understand with the state because we're in that status with the state, but we still need something, a school improvement. How are we gonna, what are we gonna do? Are we using Dibbles? Are we using Ames Webster, Webster so we do, assessment? We, we do that and we craft that locally. This is something totally different. So um, are we working? Uh, yes, so that's So we're yes. working towards a school improvement plan for Burke Oak Academy. Yes. Thank so you. outside of this plan, mm -hmm. every school has their plan. Yes. So the school improvement plan is specific to certain data points and certain certain metrics, which are which are aligned to your designation. So this is not a total snapshot of what's going on in the school, how and why. This is just for compliance for the grant sake. But to your question, yes, we do have plans, uh, and every principal and um, what do you call it? So this is the school improvement team. Your instructional leadership team, they have plans as well. And they communicate that with academic services, and that's what we monitor throughout the year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Jose, okay. So may I have a motion? Or are you going to table this? Okay. So, the, uh -oh. so the corrections, I mean, the corrections are grammatical. So we can fix that. Approving, the state has already approved it. So um, the, the last part of us receiving our grant funds is that the board has to accept it. So we, we can fix the grammatical issues and resubmit it to the board. But it's already been substantially approved by the state. The language, the data, and the targets, that's already been accepted by the state. Now we just have to re-fix these errors that you found. I think some errors weren't exactly grammatical that, that I kind of found uh, in terms of like there was a question in the key activity section that was not responded to in terms of um, who was responsible for a monitoring. Um, let me see, that would be page Page six. I don't have to. Page six for um, how you met. Is it uh, the third through fifth grade building? That's Burr yeah. uh, So that should be the first one. Yeah. So, and then I, and I had a question about a couple other uh, pieces that I kind of glanced at, but they weren't dramatic. If, if you have if you have specific questions, uh, I don't want to change this plan because this was written with the state consultant, which they already accepted that portion. So I don't want to change anything which changed the overall plan. But if you have specific questions, then we can definitely look into that with them. So we're going to go uh, bring it back in August uh, meeting? Okay. All right. Moving on to item, action item. Approval to adopt 2024-2025 district budget. Be it hereby moved that the Board of Education approve the adoption of the 2024-2025 district budget as presented. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Second by Miss Story. Question. Well, I guess again we're gonna vote no uh, for the reasons I stated last last month and have consistently for the last three years about our allocation of resources to the board. Um, okay. So this would be on record of having said that. All right. Thanks. Roll call, John. Yes, Brown. No. Jackson absent. Golar. Yes. yes. All right. Kimbrough? No. Love? Absent? Story? No. Harris? Yes. Motion failed. Approval of Eisenhower Co op Facilities Agreement. Suggested motion be it hereby move that the Board of Education approve the Eisenhower Co op Facilities Agreement in the amount of $2,205,000. Two million two hundred and five thousand six hundred and six dollars 
as presented. Motion by Mr. Golar. Second. Second by Ms. Um, Brown. Question? Question. I thought, honestly, I'm looking because I thought it was like a million or something. Over 15 years, I'm looking, trying to you find that. Million. It was over a million, million, right? Now, One second. Yeah, I'm looking too because I could have sworn I'm right. I saw too many. I know it was over a span of 15 years, and I do know we, we need it. That's, that's the correct price, 2.2 million right there. That's the correct, so right there. So, <coughs> so over the years, that's the price there. Is that over, like that's the 15 years? Yes, so from 2025 down to 2039, that's it. So we, so what, how much do we pay overall? That, that's what we're going to pay overall. Yearly? No, this is a year, so every year, so 2025, 147, that's what the payment is, yeah. So it's just broken down. It's you broken down, okay. correct. Okay. But that's the, the total number. Roll, uh, roll call, John. Yes, Brown? Yes. Dixon, absence, Golar? Yes. Kimbrough? Yes. Love, absent, story? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ocean Carry? Thank you. Approval of emergency campus security contract. Suggested motion being hereby moved that the Board of Education approves the emergency agreement with Benford Protection Group to provide campus monitoring and security services for the district at the anticipated cost of $175,056.48 for the 2024-2025 school year as presented. Um, I'm gonna say we're gonna have to table this. So we're gonna table this, okay? So just understand that if you table this, we will not have security on the first day of school. That's fine, we'll table this, we'll come back to it. Um, and what I, what I believe that we should do is go back out to bid. So from this point, um, starting, what, Monday? or as soon as possible, put this out back to me. So, if that's the, the directive of the board, then I would need consensus to do that. And the reason I'm saying that is because we're, technically we've been compromised. We've been compromised because we just went to bid. The exact same companies are going to bid again, and they're gonna play the numbers game. So, uh, that was the reason that the recommendation was made to uh, go back for a one-year emergency contract. Um, so whatever the will of the board is, but just understand that we've been compromised because we've already published the bid. The exact same companies are going to bid again. Um, and the same company could bid again with the lowest bid and it could be $200,000 less and they automatically win and we're back in the same spot. So what I'm gonna say is that uh, we're gonna, um speaks with the attorney, okay, on this. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to be here, but uh, this is regarding this. So we've had we had conversation, you and I did, with the attorney uh, right after the board meeting, and the response pretty much was the same. Um, and so if you remember, security services was basically purchased as an emergency the first time yeah. because the district didn't go out to be it. Yeah. So, um, I'm all for the bid process because that's what follows the state procurement law. I just think we put ourselves in a very bad position as a district going back out to bid for the exact same bid. And then if we put an exclusion in the bid, which I have seen, that says if you bid it the first time, you can't bid again, then we probably won't get any um, applications. So uh, what I would suggest is that we have a conversation um, after the meeting with the attorney. Okay. Okay, so we're going to table this and then we're going to come back and follow through, follow up with the, the attorney. So what is the preliminary plan then? Because at this point, we, we don't... Will, we will talk about it and if need be, we will have an um, um, emergency meeting. Okay. okay, no problem. All right. Um, so we're going to table this. Moving on to um, public comments. 
comments tonight? No. Very good. New business? Any for you, Joe? No, it's the last meeting. No FOIAs. Okay. It's the last meeting. Any board reports? No board reports. Uh, congratulations on summer school. Welcome to uh, new hires and uh, those who were uh, shuffled. Um, I am really excited to see what we can cook up this semester, and I'm excited that we are growing collard greens. So, <laughs> so uh, thank you. Hope you all have a great summer, um, and looking forward to a fantastic school year. I just want to say congratulations, welcome aboard to School District 132. We are excited that we will do um, great things. I'm not going to say make it great again, but we'll do great things in District 132. I'm excited because the gym is coming along and um, in that greenhouse. Um, I'm excited about that. And I could just imagine to look at those um, kids' faces. Wow, look at this. What is this? What is that? and all the questions they may have about the greenhouse. But I am excited for this um, next school year for school year. So um, kudos to all the principals and all the APs and our CSBO, yay. And um, <laughs> so kudos to all of you all and welcome, welcome aboard. I will say ditto, ditto, ditto. Mm -hmm. Welcome, uh, congratulations to those um, principals and APs and again, welcome to our new CSB. And um, you know, you guys keep working hard because that's what you do, and that's what you do. So I'm gonna repeat after these ladies what they stated. Um, I'm so uh, glad that we have a new uh, chief business officer. We have some new assistant principals joining our family. Um, I hope that the rest of your summer is pretty cool. I'm glad to see Mr. Drum, Mr. Ouellette, Ms. Brown, Mr. Ivy over there in the cut. It's okay. Uh, Mr. Corley, always glad to see you guys. Ms. Bates and Ms. Dr. Saberson and so forth. And uh, Dr. Burdett and Ms. Washington and Ms. Roxanne. I'm going to go through everybody. <laughs> oh, and the new yeah. assistant yeah. principal, now you're going to have to help me with your last name. Okay. You want to try it? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> I think you're going to have to give me some help. Cosby. 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 Yes, ma'am. Okay, Ms. Cosby. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, uh, welcome you uh, guys, and we hope that you guys have a fantastic uh, school year, uh, up in school year. Um, I just wanted to mention, uh, I'm always doing this, uh, uh, talking about my daughter again. She is a wildland firefighter, and she is in Idaho. And at this point, she is fighting fires. So yeah, so I just wanted to let you know, one of our uh, children here that was born and raised here, she is um, making Calumet Park uh, very proud. That's all I wanted to say. And I just want to add that, uh, I just learned that the city chancellor, the chancellor at City College is, is a product of the Calumet Park School District as well. Oh, okay, well very good, very good. And I, I hope to see everybody on the ribbon cut. I'm, I'm really excited too. I promise you, I'm, I, I really am. So, okay, that's all. Good evening, everybody. I just want to say congratulations to everybody. Me, myself, I look forward to spending more time and seeing you guys more. Sorry about some of my absences, but I don't know business to it with manpower shortages and everything going on. I was standing post a lot of times, so I look forward to being more involved with the board and knowing you by name and not just by face. Congratulations to everybody. Okay. Um, I'm still waiting for Ms. Harris to recognize me, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, John, oh, oh, my God. Uh, John. Mr. Chop Liver. <laughs> John. Please forgive me. I look forward to seeing you born. <laughs> oh, John. Oh, my God. I'm You're sorry. Awesome. <laughs> okay, that was it. Oh, you are. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just I'm used the text message. Okay, uh, so we don't have closed session. So, and I want to just say, uh, everyone, we hope to see you later in a minute uh, to kind of like a meet and greet. Okay, look forward to that. Uh, may I have a motion to close, please? So moved. Moved by Ms. Story, second? Second. 
second by Ms. Story, I mean, uh, Brown. Ms. Brown. Roll call, John. Ms. Brown? Yes. Dixon absent, Golar? Yes. Kimbrough? Yes. Love absent, Story? Yes. Harris? Yes. Motion carried at 6.46 p.m. Woo-hoo, that's a uh, record. That's a, that's a record, 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 okay? 